Hello, general biology. Welcome to the desert biome. The first thing we're going to talk about is geography and location. The first one is arid deserts. They are found in North America, South America, Africa, Southern Asia. They generally occur at low latitudes. Their seasons are mostly dry and hot. Very few occurrences of rain. Arid desert vegetation consists of shrubs and small trees. Arid desert animal species are most active at night. The next one is semi-arid deserts. Semi-arid deserts are found in North America, Europe, Russia, and North America. Their seasons are more defined than arid deserts. Significant low rainfalls during the winter. Semi-arid plants and animals thrive in this climate. Animals found in the shade of trees and plants. The next one is coastal desert. Coastal deserts are found in areas that are most likely warm to cool. Their winters are usually cool and short. Summers very long and warm. The soil is mostly sandy with a high alkaline context. Ground is very porous. Rain seeps rapidly into the ground. The next is cold desert. Cold deserts are the strangest of all desert biomes. They are associated with heat of the sun. Even if there is snow and rainfall, soil is too heavy and alkaline. Alluvial <laughs> fans pull some of the salt through the porous soil so plant life can survive. The next thing we're going to talk about is climatographs. They are a graphic representation of the relation of two climatic events as temperature and humidity, plotted at monthly intervals throughout the year. The first example we have is a picture of the Sahara. Next we have Kuwait and then one of Arizona. Abiotic factors. Some abiotic factors of the desert biomes are precipitation, water availability, sunlight, and temperature. The big six animals of the desert are the scarab beetle, which live on every continent of the world except Antarctica. They can lift 1,141 times their own body weight, and they feed on excrement of other animals. The next animal is the desert monitor. Desert monitors are a desert dwelling species of a lizard. They inhabit in Western Sahara, the Arabian desert, and arid regions across Central Asia. They become most active during the day. The next animal is the ostrich. The ostrich is the largest and heaviest bird in the world. They are mainly found in deserts of West and Central Africa. This bird possesses a numerous numerous abilities that make them well adapted to live in the desert lands like the Sahara. Here are pictures of the scarab beetle, the desert monitor, and the ostrich. The next three big six animals are the fennec fox, which are the smallest species of the fox that live in dry regions of the Sahara. They weigh less than one kilogram. They are known for their long ears and adaptations they possess to survive in the Sahara. The next is the Death Stalker Scorpion. They are one of the most poisonous creatures found in the scrublands and deserts. The venom of Death Stalker Scorpions are not fatal to healthy adult humans. They can live on few insects for an entire year. The last one is the Dromedary Camel. They are introduced into the Sahara Desert around 200 AD. They have only one hump and they have shorter hair to keep them cool in the hot summers. And here are pictures of the Fennec Fox, Deathstalker Scorpion, and Dromatory Campbell. Next we have the big six plants. We have the desert marigold, the desert lily, and the desert willow tree. First is the desert marigold. Desert marigolds belong to the aster family and they are commonly found in the sub southwestern parts of the U.S. and Mexico. They are annual and short-lived perennial plants 
which grow between 10 and 30 inches and have very hairy leaves. Their hairs help them survive in extreme desert conditions by increasing the reflections of light. Next is the desert lily. Desert lilies are also known as Hesperocallus, and they are flowering plants that are found in the deserts of North America, Mexico, California, and Arizona. Lastly, the desert willow tree. The desert willow trees are known as the Chilopisus. They're a delicate, small, deciduous shrub or tree in the U.S. or Mexico. Their flowers bloom in May and stay on till September. And here are some pictures of the desert marigold, desert lily, and desert willow tree. The next three plants are the palm trees, the saguaro, and the barrel cactus. Palm trees grow in tropical, subtropical, hot, and humid conditions. They cannot withstand too much cold, and they have long stems and long leaves. Next is the saguaro. The saguaro belongs to the cactus species. They have a huge lifespan of about 150 years. Their spines grow rapidly, growing almost a millimeter a day. Barrel cactuses are next. They are one of the most common plants in the desert across the world. Their height can be anything between 1 meter to 10 meters, and they grow during April, and their flowery flowers vary in color. And here we have some pictures of them, palm trees on top, and then the barrel cactus, and then the saguaro. Next, we're going to talk about food webs in the desert. A food web is a system of interlocking and interdependent food chains. Here are some pictures of examples of some food webs in the desert. The next topic is producers and consumers. A producer is a living thing that helps other parts of our ecosystem grow and give food to animals. A consumer is a thing that eats or uses something. Some examples of producers and consumers in the desert biome are agave, which is a producer, the cheetah, which is a consumer, the desert coyote, which is also a consumer, and the Joshua tree, which is a producer. Lastly, we have the adaptations of the big six. So we start with the sc scarab beetles. They have adapted to their surrounding and are able to subsist almost entirely on animal waste. The desert monitor. They at first could only survive in desert areas, but have adapted to be able to live in forests and wetlands. The ostrich. They are able to run up to 40 miles an hour. They can travel a long way and can also pick up noises and see movement across vast distances, helping them spot and avoid predators. The fennec fox. Their large ears help them hear better in the desert and help them to release body heat. The death stalker scorpion. This type of scorpion is translucent and yellow in appearance and among the most venomous animals in the Sahara Desert. These traits help them pr to protect themselves. And then lastly, the dromedary camel. The camels carry large lumps of vax on their fat that store energy, allowing them to survive in the desert. Next is the movie that relates to the desert biome. So me and my partners picked Cars, which is by... Pixar and was made in 2009. The movie takes place in present-day Arizona, which is Radiator Springs in the movie, and it has an arid desert biome with shrubs and little vegetation. Okay, here we go. Focus. Speed. Hey, Lightning, you ready? Oh, yeah. The rookie sensation came into the season unknown, but everyone knows him now. You're my hero, Mr. McQueen. Fred, thank you. He knows my name. He knows my name. California, here I go. Holy Porsche. Ow! The cutest little town in Carburetor County. Hey, that's that. You need a new paint job, man. Full rise. Sure. How about some organic fuel? Take a car wash, hippie. Ah! This place is crazy. I gotta get out of here. You're funny. I like you already. Folks around here are not firing on all cylinders, if you know what I mean. 
I know your type. Doc, hold it. These are good folk around here who care about one another. Come on, let's take a drive. A drive? Don't you big city race cars ever just take a drive? Ah, uh, no. Look at that. Look, and they're driving right by. They don't even know what they're missing. 40 years ago, that interstate didn't exist. The town got bypassed just to save 10 minutes of driving. When is the last time you cared about something except yourself, Hot Rod? Oh, dude. Are you crying? No, I'm happy! Walt Disney Pictures presents a Pixar Animation Studios film. Do I spy a little pinstriping tattoo back there? Oh, you saw that? On June 9th. <laughs> What's so important about this race of yours? I've been dreaming about it my whole life. A guy who thought he had it all <laughs> is about to discover <laughs> everything he's been missing. I know that I made a good choice. And what? My best friend. There's a lot of love out there, you know, man. We are back in business. It's down. <laughs> scare you? Well, a little bit, but I'll be all right.